So in a final answer to how long it will take to get to sort of six figures, seven figure mark, even starting with £1,000, I estimate it will take around the length of this course, which is why it's 36 months. So that is just there to clarify of what I think is achievable in trading. So as I was saying, we released the Forex Market Masterclass. Now it was called the Forex Market Masterclass and it's been delisted from Udemy and we prior to, sold, prior to selling it on Udemy, we sold that to a bespoke um, club of people who had taken out Forex Signals. We only released Forex Signals for one month and we accumulated around 100 people. This was done in July 2016. So you might be asking, why didn't you continue selling signals? Well, we felt we had enough, we'd taken on enough clients to train over the next 12 months and we didn't need any more. So I decided that I would sort of just monitor and help those 100 clients. And that's what I did. And that's, that really worked well for me because it helped me not take on too many too early. And we also made a video course explaining how the signal system worked. Then in 2017, around July, I released a add-on, or it wasn't, it was, it was more than just an add-on, it was like a whole new way of thinking about the model that we'd built the previous year. So we released like a cyclic component to the, to the, the model. And that allowed us to, to interpret the, the, the sort of nine states. So we could determine where, if we're in a bearish or bullish cycle based on the previous states, and whether or what type of cycle we're going to go into next. And that's what I released last August, and I sold around 15, 15 to 15 clients at £1,000, okay? And then I used that money over the last 12 months to trade to just over six figures, not 200 grand, just over. So I took about 15K of money that I'd raised from sales and turned it into just over six figures. That's what you can do in 12 months, just over 12 months. So if you continue at that rate for 24 to 36 months, you will get to the millionaire trader. Okay, so what is the downside? What is the drawdown, the risk component? So for my calculations, if you only trade Forex, you can do very, very well, but you would be better off if you also incorporated commodities, indices, equities, US equities, that is, and bonds. If you incorporate those other four asset classes, if the FX market goes into a whole consolidating range for three or four months, or even six months, it can be harder to get as a good gain. However, Elsewhere in the world, money might be flowing in into equities. The Dow Jones might be zooming up and you're still stuck in this Euro trade, GBP trade, and they're just consolidating. If the markets don't trend, it's harder to make money. So you need to be trading a range of asset classes, which is, you can look at the graphs, we'll go through the data later, and you'll see that if we add more asset classes, we do better, so we get less drawdown. That is the sort of take home message there, trade, diversify. So this last 12 months, I have predominantly been trading FX. It's only since around June, July, which I've decided to incorporate equities, indices, bonds, and commodities. That's mainly because I've now got a larger account size and it enables me to do so. So if you're not going sort of, if you're not got like five figures together, then it's gonna be harder to, for you to get all the trades on. So in that, if that's you, then you are probably better off just starting with the FX trades. So another question that's on your mind is, if it's that good, why are you selling it? Why do you need to sell it if you've already got to six figures? Well, there is a lot of like pollution in the FX retail sector and Having gone through the education myself, I wouldn't really want to be buying the junk which is out there. 
So it's really as a favour from me to you that I'm giving you some of the information from our systems. And this information was available for a bespoke about 100 clients in July 2016. So I do still think that that information should be made public. I don't think all of our systems should be into the public domain, but I do think certain knowledge should be given to retail traders. So how did I go about coming up with this? Well, I traded gold originally and silver bullion. I invested in silver bullion around $80,000. That went to 125,000 by August 2011. That was when silver was at $49 and I'd invested at about $29 in January 2011. So it was quite a good investment for when you turned 18 if you had a sovereign fund. So I decided that I'd go for it. It was introduced as a concept by sort of Max Kaiser, who is a Russian, um, well, he's actually an American sort of TV presenter, economist, ex Wall Street a banker, um, who dishes a lot of dirt on America for Russia. So when I was 18 years old, I'd applied to do study dentistry at four universities in the UK. Now, dentistry has like quite it's quite competitive to get onto that. It's bright people who apply to it, and you have around nine to one applicants to places per university, and there aren't that many universities in the UK that offer it. It's almost I say it's about the same um, to get onto dental school as about the same to get into medical school. So that's the comparison, um, and I got into three out of four dental schools in the UK. So I went on a course um, for medicine actually prior to applying for medicine to decide between dentistry and medicine. And they said that only like 1% of applicants will get all four places uh, of their chosen place, all offers for their places and around 5% will get three offers. So I did very well if you think about in terms of these are smart people applying and I got my three out of four offers. In the end, I stood, ended up studying dentistry at the University of Bristol um, between 2012 and 2015. Um, I decided to cut my dentistry degree sort of short because by the time I got to 2015, I'd created a hell of a good financial market system. So while I was at dentistry, I spent my time my evenings and quite a few sort of lectures which I wasn't going to because I was just like battering through MT4 um, and MT or MT5 wasn't out then um, I was but it was like not as good um, so I was battering through making algorithms um, originally between 2011 and 2013 I was paying people to make the algorithms and in around 2000 and 13, 14, that time I decided to learn how to program in MQL4 and MQL5. Um, and the breakthrough for me didn't come from coding MT4 at Expert Advisors. It came from when I stumbled across Anton Creel's um, courses and he said that like he used a lot of Excel, Microsoft Excel that is. And Back then I thought, why would you use Excel? Why, why would you use that? Why not just use MT4? It's all intraday and all that. And it was really from sort of like looking at his courses, which at the time about 3,000 pounds to buy his course. And it was from looking at that and then deciding, all right, there, there is a better way than MT4. And it was when I made that transition from MT4 to Microsoft Excel, which is when I started to think more statistically about what I was doing. And I learned how to program in Microsoft Excel VBA and how to learn how to program really, really well in using if and functions, average, average is like everyone can use average and some functions, but I didn't really understand the if and functions until I was like Googling, how do you do this? How do you make it more efficient? And I created a multivariate regression model in Microsoft Excel using daily data from downloaded from investing.com. 
Now, one of the reasons why I used investing.com data and not MT4 data was because your broker would limit you on how much data you could have. Typically, you could only download data sort of around 2008 or 2005, but if you wanted prior to that, you had to go elsewhere for your data source. So I decided I need to know that my system works like forever. Like, I need to know it's a legitimate system and it will just continue, continue working or it's at least worked on all the data available. And all the data available is prior to sort of around 1980, around 1980s. Now, if we go back to sort of 1983, that is when the financial markets first got turned into like an electronic system. And that was known as the Big Bang One. And then I think it was around 19, it might have been 1986, that was the first Big Bang. And then when the internet came out, like 1990s three, that was the Big Bang Two. And the Big Bang Two is when electronic derivative trading started taking off. And then around 2009, the retail brokers got hold of it and they decided they'd market it to the public, retail traders like you. So that is sort of why the data is not so valid if you're trying to get hold of intraday data during the day. So you have to use daily data if you want to test prior to sort of 2007, 2005. So that's why I decided to use that data. And I personally believe that that is a good idea. Like I think um, a model that works on daily data, you could also think about in terms of cycles, right? So institutions, they're gonna be looking at daily charts. They're gonna to go to work, look, assess the markets, and then they're gonna go home to sleep and they're gonna come back the next day. They're not trading as frequently during the night if it's like a big hedge fund manager making a manual decision. So they're going to more, it's like a riff, a rhythmic cycle. So that's the best way to think about it. It's like day night cycle. Um, and that will only appear on the daily charts. That won't appear on a one hour chart. That's a different type of cycle. 